good one. Um, how do you tell someone that they're wrong? Because that's a really difficult thing to do. This is a dreadful answer, but often I don't bother. <laughs> so I pick my fights. Um, and I think that's a parenting thing as well, isn't it? You pick your battles. Mm. Um, so I've got this kind of thing, which is that you you can assess whether you're going to change the way somebody is. So you can um, make a determination as to whether anything you say will make any difference, um, whether you care, whether it impacts you long term, whether you should do it because it's right for the people. So there's a lot of different things which come into play here. But I essentially will do some sort of anal internal analysis of <laughs> is it worth it? Is it going to have any impact? Do and if it's not okay i mean that that makes sense that's a sensible <laughs> answer i can never leave it because because of that perfectionist in me I, I couldn't leave it if i knew someone was wrong so i wouldn't go you're wrong but what i usually would say it's a trainer thing in the training room when someone's wrong it's like oh, that's a really interesting take on it what makes you say that <laughs> in other words back it up give me the evidence tell me where you're coming from and obviously if they can't then you can then carry on that conversation so that's that's my my take on it to uh, hopefully get them to appreciate oh, wait a minute well and there's also the sort of people who utterly love the argument of it so I've just said to Stephen in the chat, you know, I'd be really interested if, if we had him on screen um, and if, you know, we ought to interview everybody we know at some point. But Stephen loves um, having that kind of debate with people. And he did that show with Hung Lee, which was Tell Me I'm Wrong. And the I don't. And I don't ever know 100 percent that somebody else is wrong. I just tell them to that I might have a, a different suggestion or an idea or what about thinking about it this way? You know, that's fair comment, what you've said. Have you ever thought of it this way? Or could I offer you another suggestion of another way of trying it? But I just think, you know, we're all little children inside. I don't think we ever really grow up. And the minute you're told you're wrong, you think you're naughty. And I don't know about you. When I was naughty and told off, I stopped listening. I'd wait for my dad's mouth to stop moving as he was telling me off. And then it passed. So I think sometimes in management of people, Telling somebody there's wrong, you've just closed their ears, they're not going to listen to any suggestions. So I think it's about nurturing people. It's about always being conscious of how the other person is going to receive what you're saying. So for me in management, it's about me adapting myself to be the voice that you're going to hear rather than just having one way of doing it. But definitely wouldn't tell somebody they're wrong. Hmm. So I sat on this one for a little while. Um, it's actually one that comes up in my coaching quite often because it, it's it's conflict in the workplace, right? At its um, at its at its essence, and where I kind of come at it is that I genuinely believe that most people are good, and if they are wrong, they are not saying they're wrong because they're an ass. Basically, they genuinely believe they're right, and if you go in and tell them that they are wrong, then they're most likely just to dig the heels in and it's going to spiral into a massive conflict um so if you can seek to understand first and get their perspective and then get their permission to give your perspective you are going to get three outcomes first one and this is the ideal one is you get a win-win so a compromise a solution um you can either present evidence that is going to get one of you to change your mind but it's evidence-based no one's kind of losing face mm -hmm. um, or it's 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 a conflict situation no one's backing down and you reach an impasse basically so at one point you can either walk away or you can argue your case and you know get your t's and c's out and it and it turns into a fight um it is not easy and i as i'm sure you have been at the receiving end of um a lot of wrong <laughs> clients and candidates over the years but um I guess one of the key messages that that I teach is to work with clients and candidates whose values align with yours. And if you've got that kind of common ground to start off with, then the the chances of it turning into conflict are less. I think. Yeah. Um, although I do live with a preteen, so you know, <laughs> if we're talking about arguing and all that stuff, then yeah, I'm not sure I've got the uh, the answers for that one. No. Well, this is I thought was quite an easy one rather than a tough one because. Oh. Yeah, I do really, because the only time you tell someone they're wrong is that if they're in the wrong. Um, otherwise, I think you're going to don't go anywhere near that. That's a terrible closed, just negative thing. <laughs> what you want to be doing is just to be trying to understand uh, the point of view they've got. And, and if there's a difference of opinion to unpack that and understand exactly 
why there might be a difference of opinion and help them uh, by pointing them in, in sort of thoughts and ideas that might go and change their mind as to why they're thinking about what they're thinking and let them come to their own conclusion. And only if you never get to that point, maybe then talk about the fact, well, we've got different perspectives and it comes down to it. You probably have to differ on opinion. But if you start telling people that they're wrong, then all you're doing is you're closing them down and it goes back to the early point on confidence and all the rest of it. You're not helping them. Yeah, no, there. so just give me a, uh, an example of someone being in the wrong. Just well, it comes down to values um, right. and it comes down to behaviours and it comes down to the way that you treat people or you actually deal with situations. And and I go back to the, 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 most, in, the most important currency that we have as individuals in our, this career and this um, in the technical recruitment is our reputation. That's the only thing of real value. Everyone's going to make money if they work hard, but they're going to, if they don't have a reputation for integrity and fair dealing and, you know, hopefully the reasonable behavior, well, you're lost. And it's something which, you know, it's a reputation is purely a function of, of quality and time or performance and time. And it's very hard to go and build up and very easy to go and lose. So, so I just think that, you know, my advice to anybody is, you know, you can speak to anybody you have you want and talk to manage people in different ways, but always look at it in the context and through the lens of actually, am I going to in 30 years from now be able to look yourself in the mirror and say, I treated people fairly or I didn't you know, I, I didn't compromise my own personal mm -hmm. values. <laughs> well, you don't. I don't think you do. I think. This is a tricky one because it, the, the question is very contextual. So um, if you're telling somebody, if you're saying to somebody, you are wrong, you're automatically saying, I am right. And I think that's very dangerous ground um, for two reasons. One is you're never going to get the best out of somebody if you say to them straight up, you're wrong. That's, it's just not, it's just not cool. And also it's even less cool to say, I am right. That if somebody is doing something wrong or they're saying something wrong that is harmful or hurtful or, um, you know, you know, is fundamentally wrong, that's different. I don't have a problem stepping in, you know, no problem at all. But if somebody's just has a different opinion to you or they are doing things differently to the way you would like them to do it, then I think that's more about education and counsel and understanding and why and, you know, can, do you think we should do it this way? And who's to say that their way is wrong? Yes. Maybe your way is wrong. I would never tell anybody they were wrong unless they were doing something wrong or they were doing a wrong to somebody else, ever, ever. I had to really think about this. Yeah. And so I went back and asked a couple of people how I would address that and I don't really tell them that they're wrong I coach them through it so if I think that they're wrong I'll ask them you know how have they come to that decision what what were the the main things that made them choose that route what other alternatives did they have and if they'd have chose a different alternative route what could the outcomes have been differently um, and then if they're still not getting it Angela then I say a suggestion would be or I may have done it slightly differently um, and do it that way so so I was quite pleased that I don't say you're wrong <laughs> I, I mean that's a great answer pretty much everyone has said they don't tell people they're wrong they've got different ways but we haven't had anyone that's gone and asked someone okay how do I tell you that you're wrong? <laughs> I've really got the reality of it and that was typical options under grow isn't it from coaching yeah. the grow model okay um, I'm sure you've had to do this many times over your career, but how do you tell somebody that they're wrong? Uh, no one likes to hear they're wrong. No one. And it is very, but I think it goes back to my recruitment days when I was a, a consultant and, uh, you know, and we were sent on management training and everything like that. And I think that you channel it in a, a management way rather than sort of a confrontational way. I, I think you always say, well, I, I, I would always try and say, you know, what could we have done differently? And in a, pro a really, you know, sort of polite way, you're saying we, we didn't get it right. You know, we didn't get it right. So what can we do differently? So I just think it's it's better than confrontation. It's just you're in it together. You know, it's not their problem. It's an our problem. So. <laughs> yes. 
interesting. So I think um, it is interesting because I think it depends on your relationship uh, with them. Because if you are in rapport with them, if you've done enough uh, and you've worked with them for long enough and you're in rapport and that they know there's positive intent um, with what you're saying, then I think that they can see criticism as feedback or even help. So it's really important to, to build up that trust. And, you know, in life, we still want to deal with people and we buy from people we like and trust. Um, so that's, that's, that's the easy way of doing it. But if you've got to tell someone that they're wrong and you're not in rapport with them, um, then it's more difficult. And I'm sure there are, more, there are more sophisticated ways and there are better people that you could ask than me. But um, the old fashioned shit sandwich works quite well, where you, know, you start the conversation with something pleasant, uh, then you hit them with you know, the thing that they're doing wrong, uh, and then you try and back it up with something positive. So really pleased you're working here, you know, you're doing really well. However, you're late all the time, every day for the last two weeks. Okay, what are we going to do about that? What could you do differently? You know, how can we sort this out? So, so I think it's to sort of flank the, the, the bad news that might upset people um, with something good uh, on, on either side. Uh, and that's as far as I've, I've, uh, I've got with that particular um, technique, I'm afraid. Oh, gosh. Um... I don't, I wouldn't tend to tell somebody they're wrong outright. Um, mm. That's probably not my style, um, other than my husband, maybe. Um, I, especially with my team or with a client uh, or with a candidate, I would always try and listen to their, their point of view and their idea first. Um, and then say something along the lines like, I, you know, I, I appreciate your point of view. Um, but yeah, I understand why you may have that opinion. Um, and then I would, you know, what I'd like to suggest is you, you potentially look at something, uh, an alternative point of view, you know, have you considered ABC, you know, and offer them to look at alternative opinions for a situation. Because I tend to find if you say, you're wrong, I disagree, instantly somebody's back's going to go up much better that they are um, coached into realising or thinking that, that they have changed their mind or their opinion. You scream and shout at them and throw them out of the building, <laughs> um, like my first boss used to do to me. Um, in fact, my first ever boss gave me the best telling off ever because we were in a room that was had a, a very thin wall. So, and I'd done, I can't even remember what I'd done wrong. I'd done something wrong that he wasn't happy with. And he said, I'm going to, I want you to imagine I'm screaming and shouting at you, but I'm going to whisper so that the rest of the staff don't hear. And, <laughs> and I, had to, I had to keep saying pardon to him. So I couldn't hear what he was saying, but it didn't all sink in. But uh, that's not the best way. That's not the best way to do it. Um, I think the best way is to obviously try and keep it as positive as possible. Um, be constructive and be calm. I think the main thing is to be calm and not, not lose your temper. It might be something that's awful, but I don't see them as mistakes. I see them as learning curves. And I try to explain that to people that they, they that in the same way that I've made lots of mistakes, they're making mistakes and that what, that's what they learn by. Um, so we, we basically consult with them, talk through what they've done, see if they can see where they've gone wrong, see if they understand what they've done wrong, and then also try and come to an agreement of how they could have done it better and what the outcome should have been. Um, and then probably a, above all else is to finish the meeting with something positive by reminding them what they are good at or reminding them that they need to sanity check things now and again, whatever it is. But as long as they walk away with a head held high rather than going out thinking, oh, my God, I'm absolutely useless. Because the whole, the whole recruitment business, you've got to be confident. Mm. You can't be destroyed. If you once you want to destroy somebody, then you may as well release them. Really, <laughs> um, I think um, honestly, um, Angela, I think there are only very little things in life where uh, somebody can be wrong. You know, there are some mass calculations; they are either right or wrong. Um, but uh, or you know, Paris is the capital of France and not um, Lyon. Um, but um, so 
if um if i have to you know also tell somebody um okay um here you are on the wrong um foot i would first of all try to understand uh why you know he came to this or she came to this uh, solution to understand um and then also explain why i think uh this is uh, this is the right way um and so if it's a math problem you 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 can't really discuss um but uh, but if it's um i i wouldn't try to you know um tell in front of a huge crowd you know here you are wrong i would um try to uh, find a way to to give this um this person um the um the answer um or uh, then if 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 it's really a question of uh, right and wrong i would um uh, i would yeah not try to um to uh, yeah tell it in the face but more privately and not in 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 public but well yeah it's so hard isn't it um i don't well uh, i don't like doing it i try to um get them to repeat back what they're saying um or i play it back to them to say you know is it have i heard this right is have i have i understood what you're saying um maybe i try and get tease tease it a bit out the, in the hope that they might then think oh maybe this isn't quite right um and the other thing that i tend to do is then give other uh, another viewpoint um and say well okay that okay i hear that that makes sense but what if somebody else says this or that this happens or this happens um reflect um you know on, you know on a different viewpoint so that's uh, generally what i do um it you know it's not it's not i don't i don't like doing it at all um hopefully they sort of come to their own conclusion um the other one thing that i tend to do as well is maybe give some stories so if i've had um well so i, I mean i i have had some i'm on the, well i'm not on it anymore actually because i had to step down because i was on the tenure too long but i was on the fcsa board and those are very very strong minded board members mm. from very big organizations and we often had um debates about things and sometimes they were wrong and um and and so i and they won't ever admit to be honest these are very strong quite often mm. big ego type people as well so they don't but i mean i i would tell a story i'd give an example of of exactly what and tell the story and then it's up to them isn't it i mean sometimes they take it and sometimes they don't i find that i i'm i'm wrong more than anybody else <laughs> i find that hard to believe no i but no and i don't know if it's because i am wrong or i'm more prepared to admit it or i just give up earlier really yeah. tough. so there's some things that people do and they cross a red line you just you just don't have it the choice is to tell them they're wrong straight up so you know power harassment sexual harassment a racist slur bullying a colleague you just got to call them out there and then at the point but i think there's another side to it as well you know you can use it as a learning opportunity for people um show them maybe how their actions were wrong or they could do something in a different way um so i'll give you an example of that if i may just very quickly yes, there was a guy who was running one of our larger technology teams across asia and i noticed on facebook he used to post a, a lot of secular anti-religious atheist jokes and comments you know uh, uh, and I, I met him at one of our academies in the region and i went up to this guy and i was just like you know you've got a big team now uh, how many's on it's like about 20 people i'm like are they all secular atheist types and he's like totally taken about by that question um so i was i was just, you know so i asked him to explain and he was he just went on and said you know some muslims and catholics christians and so on 
And I just said, you know, I've seen that on, on Facebook that you've been putting this stuff out. I'm just wondering how some of your team would react when they saw that. I mean, you were their boss, but you didn't respect the religion that you're with. And it just like someone had hit him with something and he just looked shocked. Um, and he, he said, look, sorry, I'm just talking to a group of people, my friends who like it, love it, follow on comments. And like, you just have to be careful on social media. And to his credit, he, he, he took it on the chin. Three, four years since then, I've never seen him uh, post anything like that. So, or maybe I'm off his friends list. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah. Um, gosh, that just, I think you have to be quite um, confident to say to somebody that you are absolutely wrong. I think everybody mm -hmm. sees things from their own perspective. And I think perception is, is quite a powerful thing. People have a perception of our business, which may be right or wrong. Um, so... I, I always try to sort of sandwich it, I suppose, a, a, a technique that perhaps goes goes back years of it's not what's said, it's how you say it. So mm. I would never be I would I would be truthful, but I would hopefully do it in a way that was constructive. OK, so am, am I thinking the sandwich here? That, yes, that's definitely. Through my yes, that we all know. Yeah. Yeah. They know what we're talking about. The recruitment sandwich, definitely that. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. Put it in there. Okay. So getting getting your point across, but making sure there's some positivity either yeah. side as well. Absolutely. Um, okay. Ooh, now this is a really good question, um, and it's, this probably gave me the the, the longest uh, pause for thought. It depends. First of all, it depends on the circumstances, yes. um, and it depends on who you are. I mean, the role that I've had when I've been the boss. Um, you, you tell if somebody's wrong it sometimes it's very short and sharp you've got that wrong do it this way bang if you're in a, a board environment on the other hand a, a board advisor chairman whatever um or you're at home or you're in the street it's a very different response um, and you need to think about it carefully um and is it something that you just disagree with because wrong is a relative term is yeah. it so is it somebody's got an opinion that i disagree with um, now I'm a fundamental believer in free speech, so I don't mind if someone's got a different opinion. In fact, I love arguing. So if um, I love debating, sorry, I should call it debating. Well, <laughs> it was always arguing in my family, but it's debating apparently. It's known as now. Um, so if somebody has got a different opinion, that's fine. If they have done something which is wrong, um, technically wrong, so an example would be a mathematical equation or something wrong on a spreadsheet, or whatever, then point it out politely um logic is much nicer than abuse um yeah. but having said that when i was thinking about this i was thinking about i want i wonder if um anyone's ever seen the um i did some training videos with mike warmsley and alexander like years ago 20 20 odd years ago mm -hmm. and um, one of them we were i remember we were filming at tower 42 and mike said on camera um, well, it was a group of us, uh, business leaders, whatever, discussing the industry. And he said, well, we don't want to be known as hire and fire. And he said a couple of things. I mean, I don't know if you know Mike, but he, he can, do. does sometimes go on a bit. Uh, bless him. I love him to bits, but he, he does sometimes go on a bit. And I said, that is complete bollocks. And they left it in the edit. It was actually in the thing. And I, somebody pointed it out to me. Years later, I'm with one of our companies I was advising. And they pointed it out to me and I said, We've got that video somewhere. We'll have to, and they found it, and it was in there. So that is complete bollocks. Of course, we're a higher and fire industry. Any successful industry is, or something along those lines. So it's um, it's a, it, it's there's no right answer to that one um, about telling somebody they're wrong. It depends on the circumstances. And if you like an argument, then sometimes devil's advocate. You know, I'm a firm believer in in that um, that type of discussion. I love a little bit of blood metaphorically spattered on a boardroom wall, um, something, a really exciting argument. Telling a chief exec they're wrong because they've got 57 ideas and you only need five I mean, is very different from telling somebody they're wrong because they've called the wrong candidate or sent the CV to the wrong client or whatever. It's a different yeah. types of things. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think for this, you just need to be honest. And I think the longer that you don't say something to someone or don't step in i think you're almost doing them a bit of a disservice if you don't do that my angle on this if i've ever had, ever had to do this with anybody is is almost to look at it as well how would you want me to to deal with you to manage with you to 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 work alongside you would you want me to not tell you things that i think are important and probably you would think important if you were viewing that on somebody else or do you want me to ignore it and just hope it's all okay 
So I just think that sense of, of honesty, I think most people seem that they find is, is a fair way of dealing with it, really. So you're setting the expectation right at the beginning of the relationship as to how we're going to be open with this. Have you ever had someone come around and say, no, I'd rather you didn't tell me? <laughs> I don't um, know I'm wrong. No, I mean, I've probably had a, a range of responses to, to the feedback, but I I like to just try and be consistent with, with who I am and what, what I say. And I think people that work work with me know that I'm generally quite fair if I say something. And if someone, you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to haul someone over the coals forever on something. And if there's something that needs to be, you know, spoken about, if we can all agree to move forward, then that, that's, I think that's how you build relationships.